in specific you thinking about that you'd like to touch on? You know what I mean? No, I mean, other than that, besides my events and shit that I'm just doing, I mean, I'm sure we'll get into all that oh, at some yeah. point, or, but, yeah. you know, other than that, just, for me, it's just what I'm trying to give back to, what, we, what I'm trying to accomplish, but all right. I'm sure all the conversation will end up going in. No doubt about it. So. Too close. I'm too close? Right there, good. You know me, I be hot. So that's why I got my little special little thing right there. I be a little too, too loud. loud. <laughs> Let me see. Count off mode. Five, four. Five, four, three, two, one. TJ. One, two, three, four, five. Right there, that's good. All right, that's a good look. look. All right, cool. I'm trying to lean in sometimes. <laughs> gotta calm myself down. Let me get excited here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can get it. Welcome back to the summer. I'm Marlon Lowe. You got Moel Robert. Hold on, hold on, man. This is the it's 2017. <laughs> it's New Year, man. Is it a new year? It's a new year. So what so, you saying? Hey man, just it's a new beginning, you know, uh a good fresh start to the new year. I'm excited, you know what I'm saying? I'm excited we got our Got a guest on. We've been trying to get him on for a while, man. He's giving us some time today. A while now. Got a lot of miles on him, too, man. Going up and down, up and down. I don't want to say what freeway, but y'all know where it is. Hey, I mean, that's what. I go I go 10 to 71. 1071. Take you, straight in, take you straight into what? 7th Street, something like that? Something like that. Pretty close. That there. Wendy's over there? Yeah. Come on, Austin, Austin, Austin Texas, man. Austin, so Texas. We got TJ Ford. Legend. T.J. Ford. And nobody knows. It probably It's probably only about 10% of people in the whole country that know what his real name is. Yeah. Oh, I, I know what it is. I know you, brother. I know you know. What is it? It's Terrence, man. Does anybody call you Terrence? For sure. Really? For Mom? Sure. Mom, Dad, a couple relatives here and there. But for the, for the most part, I mean, I've been going by T.J. Mom. My whole life, but when you go into the to the schools, you know my teachers call me Terrence for the most part. Did you ever get a, a tease growing up by, with your friends? No, 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 never, <laughs> never. I mean, they nah. tease you all the time, like Terrence. <laughs> no, nah, nobody would have never really knew my real name until I moved to Houston. You know, when I moved to Houston, um, you know the teachers was calling me Terrence. I just didn't feel like correcting them, telling them kind of, you know. Everybody called me TJ, so I just kind of let it, let it, let it go. But back home in Baytown, everybody called me, called me TJ since I was a kid. So Baytown, Texas, that's about 20, 20 15 minutes from the base. It's almost Houston, basically. But yeah, you know, on the outside, yeah, yeah. You know, small little town. So uh, what brought y'all here when you came to Tech? When you came to Houston from Bo from Baytown to Houston, what what was what, what brought you? But well, the whole whole thing with us was, uh, you know, I got I got I got founded by a guy named Ron Lewis when I was, uh, in I think like fourth fourth grade, mm -hmm. um, playing three on three hoop it ups and and playing hoops around the city of Houston, and we was playing in older divisions, beating everybody. Me and my uh, my cousin and my two friends that I grew up with, and uh, he didn't want to introduce us to to AE basketball, so we was called the Saluki Jazz, so I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody kind of <laughs> knew about the Saluki Jazz here in town, so, you know, on the weekends, we played at Sam Houston, where they the had Saluki the, league. the yeah. league with, with Jay Bosco dad, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from there, when I got to eighth grade, you know, my mom decided that, you know, being in Baytown, and she wanted to save up and, and try to buy a home, and uh, this, the place where she was able to, to buy a home was in this area right here in Missouri City, so mm. okay. that's how we ended up moving to, to Houston, um, Around uh, March of my my eighth grade year, after I finished my basketball season in, in Baytown. So, so when you moved to Missouri City, you not you weren't just like the guys are nowadays. You went to the school that's just right there by your house. Or yeah, you yeah, for sure. You just happened to you just happened to land close. Basically, you went to Willow Ridge High School, or was it something like? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, I'm zoned to Willow Ridge High School. You know, I used to walk to school. I mean, I went to <laughs> McCullough, so you know, I'm I'm in the neighborhood. So. Right. And to your point, though, it wasn't like... No, I didn't move to come yeah, play basketball. No, nah, my mom was able to 
go through a program and, and, and buy a, a, a home for the first time. So that's how we end up moving to Houston. Man, that's big. You say go through the program. See, that's a whole other conversation. Took a program to get a home for the first time, yeah. and it's just you, that, that was one of the biggest one of the biggest steps that you can take. From a family perspective, you know what I mean? And then, like you say, y'all moved out there too. Yeah, I mean, I spent so much time in Houston. I mean, obviously, when you're in these small towns, I mean, you, you have to, um, you know, the, the resources here in Houston. And, and uh, my mom just felt, you know, it was just going to be a better opportunity, which it, it panned out to be. Now, what was that experience like when you, when you first came here and you were living here? New neighborhood, you know, new set of friends. What was that different period like for you? I mean, it was an adjustment because I'm coming from a, 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 a real diverse um, school system being in, in Baytown. So you had different, I mean, you had whites, you had Hispanics, you had blacks. And then when you come um, straight to Houston, it was, it was predominantly a black school with, with Hispanics. So uh, totally different in the way of, of demeanor. Um, things was moving a lot faster compared to what it was in Baytown, but it was, it was still the same things. You know, still, you know, crime, still drugs. Yeah. It was still the same thing. It was just on a whole nother, different scale, another scale, way bigger scale, and uh, just getting used to it. I mean, was it a a, a change? Uh, it, it was, but you know, where I'm from and the things that that we talk, the way that we live in Baytown, for the most part, um, you know, you kind of just mind your business, stay out of the way, and, and, and keep it moving. And, <laughs> You know, just hanging around the right people. So as far as that, that none of that changed for me. Now you, and then once you went to Willow Ridge, you played on what's arguably one of the recognized as one of the best teams to play high school basketball in the state of Texas. And you played with a group of guys that was, you know, have went on to just like yourself played in the NBA. Yeah. Two other guys on the on the team that played in the NBA as well. Yeah. And my question would be is like. When we start talking about Daniel Ewing and Ivy McFarland, those were just two of the guys we were talking about. Did you know those guys when you first stepped on the campus of Willow Ridge High School? No, I didn't know Ivy. Ivy wasn't there right away. Um, obviously, I knew Daniel because uh, Daniel played with uh, Dale Shepard, uh, Sheldon, uh, right before they had uh, Houston Select with Selena. So, you know, he had his own youth team with Alton Ford and... He had a good little group, and we played Daniel them at uh, Westbury Christian in the like AU qualifying, uh, and he kicked our butt by himself. Uh, <laughs> and that's when it was still me, it was still Carlos on this squad with the Saluki Jazz. Um, and then when I did move here to Houston, I ended up playing with the um, I don't want to say the Four Bend Stars, but it was uh, Arthur Cobra. So that was I, I, that team was loaded with with all the kids that was really coming to Willow Ridge anyway, the zone. So. Right. That pretty much AAU team right there was already coming to Willow Ridge, and Daniel was part of that on that squad. So when I decided to to, to move from one organization to the next um, and leaving the, the Jazz, I end up just you know right before maybe like August, September, October, right before high school season started, we was planning some little fall leagues with them, and and the rest is history. I mean that was pretty much our sophomore team uh -huh. that uh, we came in with. I mean I. At Willow Ridge, so we didn't play the on the freshman team. We played. He actually, Coach Cordy actually played us up on the sophomore team. So, so coming in as a freshman, you played. Play on the sophomore, sophomore team. team. Yep. So you wasn't no freshman that play, had to play varsity. Your mom and dad wasn't having meetings with the coach every day. Like, wow, why, why am I, like, why, why aren't you playing on the varsity? You know, a lot, a lot of kids now they expect to play on the varsity level as a freshman. No, nah, my parents know. Was my parents totally different. Yeah, I mean, my parents already, they already know that, you know, they, they, they let me take care of my, my, my business. They let me go out there and represent and, and, and do what I'm going to do without having to say much or get into it with anybody. I don't think anybody can kind of recall of, of my parents getting into it with another parent or an opposing team. I, I think when it comes down to just, you know, the character, what my, my parents stand for, it's just no nonsense and just, hey, you can say whatever you want to say. You can do whatever you want to do in the stands. That's fine. But, you know, my, my dad taught me how to play this game. and He taught me pretty well. So none of that stuff really was, was a big factor for him because he, he knew what I was going to do every night. Man, you, and you said, I mean, you might be just you stepping on some toes when you say right there. It's just about their character and the way they were all your age. They, they wasn't out of line. They wasn't jumping. They wasn't screaming. They wasn't. They just let you go out and do your thing. Yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, I mean, I'm on the court playing. 
You know, right. the kids on the court playing, so they gotta either, you know, they gotta be able to do what they gonna do on their own. There's nothing you can you can do. I mean, obviously my, I mean, they knew I was prepared. They knew how how hungry I was gonna be. They knew the will I had to win, and they knew that I understood how to win basketball games, and I was willing to do whatever it takes to to win. And at the end of the day, they, you know, I was a sacrifice player. I sacrificed it a, a, a lot in my entire um, high school career. Um, for the better sake of of the team, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So, um, go in detail with that. What what you what you mean? What what you say? I didn't average a lot of points in high school. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the best player on my on my high school team. That was Daniel Ewan. I think everybody in the city and the state felt that Daniel Ewan was the best player on the Willow Ridge Eagles team. Mm -hmm. uh, Carlos Hurt was the best player in the city of Houston, probably, I think even in the state. I think it really went him, me, Daniel, and kind of however you want to flip-flop it. But um, that's kind of, you know, that's, that's kind of how it was. So, you know, that was my drive. That was my motivation. But uh, for me, it, it's not, it, it's competing. Mm -hmm. and, and speaking of competing, like, you did your thing. And I know it's been a long time. People always used to go back and forth. T.J. Ford, Carlos Hurt, T.J. Ford, Carlos Hurt. Now, what type of relationship did y'all have from an individual perspective? And then from a competition perspective, do you think he's one of the toughest guards that you had to, that you faced in, during your uh, high school career as far as that? Um, I mean, me and Lowe's grew up together. That was, my, that was one of my best friends growing up as a kid. There so we spent a lot of time at each other's house, spending the night, and whatever he did, I did mm. as a kid. Um so you know, for me, it's it's I'm always gonna be competitive with my friends first. First and foremost, my friends is gonna be the ones that I'm most competitive with. So far as between me, Daniel, and Carlos Hurd, it was whether we was playing pickup in the gym or we was playing an AAU tournament, or we was playing in high school. Like we, we was trying to kill each other. That's just that's just no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Because uh, when we you know. What we all believed in, when we all together, we, we, we move as one, everybody sacrifice, whether we're on the same team. But um, I think the way it was set up for us is the way our mentality was, is you play AAU basketball um, with each other, and you know, then it, it's everybody sacrifice. So when you go back to your high school, it's when you're supposed to be the man and, no doubt. and do all the things you're supposed to do. And, you know, obviously, you know, we played each other a lot in high school. Mm -hmm. So Do you see those things today? Like you said, good friends hanging out with their competitiveness. They trying to go at each other. And do you see the same type of, you know, uh, competitive, competitive nature, nature, nature in the kids nowadays as you had, or is it different? If it is it stronger? Is it tougher? You know what I mean? Because I just think the AAU mentality is affecting that aspect of, of, of that what we're talking about. But what do you mean by that? Um, because it's obviously it's people. These kids don't ever get to play against each other. I think everybody wants to. You know, brag or I don't want to say brag or, or or I mean, how many of these kids actually just play each other? Just who cares who's better? It doesn't mm -hmm. doesn't really matter who's mm -hmm. the better talent or this guy's ranked higher than that guy. It doesn't it's matter at all. It's just are we really putting kids in position to be successful through AAU and even through high school basketball? Right. Um, I think in order for the stuff to get get better for the future and for the kids and for families. The relationships between AAU and high school, it has to get better because everybody has the same objective. And that's to help the kids and try to help them improve and be successful in life. That should be the ultimate goal no doubt. going forward. But it's a it's a um, it's it's a it, it's a battle. Mm -hmm. It's a battle that it really really shouldn't be. Because, because my, my opinion. yeah, in my in my perspective is 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 very similar. I think that um, organizations are too afraid to have their their players match up for the sake that <laughs> some kid outshines the other kid, and then the mixtape comes, and then the ranking comes, and then there's so many different variables where mm. we never get a chance to really just play for the sake of just playing and competing. No doubt, because people are trying to. I don't want to match up against Daniel Young because if they match up. He might get the best of him, and that might affect his ranking, and he may not get this, and he may not get this offer, mm -hmm. when it just to be about just playing the game. Yeah. It's about making each other better. Yeah. That's it. Better. You get better uh, playing against 
some of the better talent in your area. And you also get better by playing against talent that is not so good. So it's a combination. I'm not saying that in order to get better, you have to play against the best players all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with that because that, that wasn't my philosophy either. You know, I, I kind of did a little bit of both. I think you got to have both. I think what happens with kids is kids do not know how to be. Um, how many kids know how to win with a bad team? Mm -hmm. mm. How many kids know how to win with a good team? Mm -hmm. Both of those are two so. needed assets. You got to have those in order to be able to be really to know how to play the game. You got to know how to be able to turn it on and be able to lead somebody when you don't have a really good team and have everybody know when you had to, when you played on a really good team. You got to learn how to play with other stars, other people who are capable of doing what you do better than some other. You got to learn how to have a. It's a mix of them. I think a lot of kids are missing that nowadays. They all. I think a lot of teams, kids, sometimes just want to be on super competitive teams the whole, from the start. <laughs> Winning teams from the start. That's okay. I mean, whatever floats everybody boat, it's, it's fine. But you know, as as adults, how can we create every? I, I hear everybody saying what can change and what needs to change, but how many people actually? believe in the same thing and line it up and those those people mm -hmm. make it happen so right. everybody's talking about all the things that need to happen and need to change but when is it actually gonna gonna happen Manifest, right right you right. know what i mean right. and, it, and it can it, it can happen i think it will happen uh it's just at the end of the day that's we, we just have to like get everybody to truly understand when it comes to sports what is what are you supposed to use it for I mean, you know what I mean? Like you're yeah. supposed to use the game to get a good education, to have good relationships, to meet people, to expand your horizon of what you've seen as as, as a kid leading to adult. Um, these are all the things that AU provides and should be talked about um, more of, of the experience that's being provided instead of just the the basketball controlling the whole aspect of it. Because 99.9 .9 of them ain't and they're not making it to the NBA, mm -hmm. um, but I think if you align all this stuff up, you we can give a kids a better opportunity to be more than just a basketball player mm -hmm. and have aspiration of just being an NBA player. Mm -hmm. it, it could be you can have more aspirations than this game of basketball um, that will allow you to have some type of success. Whether you want to do a podcast like you guys doing, like if you want to be, you know, AAU coach, a college coach, a writer, it's, it's a lot of stuff kids can do now. They're not they're not as limited as it was for us of just having to be a player, an NBA player, mm -hmm. or a basketball player. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, you won a couple, you won state championship at Willow Ridge. Mm -hmm. You come out, you go to the University of Texas. Was Tex how long was Texas on you before you decided to go to Texas? Were they on you for the whole year? Did they just come in at the last minute? Was that a dream school? You know, people always say dream schools, and you didn't go. You didn't go to the University of Houston, which is right here in your backyard. You didn't go to A and M. I mean, how did how did all that transpire? Um, a little different because I was a highly ranked top twenty player my entire high school career. You know, I'm one of the. I think I was the second. I think it was just me and Brandon Bender. Maybe it was a third guy, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it, at that time, it was maybe just us two or maybe you know, another person or so that actually went to ABCD camp as a, as a freshman going into my, fresh, my sophomore summer. Mm -hmm. So I was already separated myself from the pack from the beginning of being able to you know, compete. So I, out of 330 kids, as a freshman, I, I, I ended up being ranked number 46 out of the whole ABCD camp. That's with Demar Johnson, that's with Carlos Boozer, that's Mike Dunleavy. Those two guys was on my team. Mm. In ABCD camp, so I played in front of three hundred and something college coaches that was that was in the building and played against some of the best. You know, my best player that I idolized the most was Andre Barrett out of New York City. That's yeah. a, that's Trade a great point. friend of mine. Mm. Trade the point, yeah. And this is ABCD camp with uh, Sonny Vaccaro. Sonny, Carl. yeah. Okay, so. At that time, you either had to go to ABCD camp or you had to go to, or you went to Nike. So I don't I don't know what the Nike side mm -hmm. looked like, but we all knew that it was the same level of players at the Nike. You just didn't have the opportunity to go see what it looked like. Because right. it was, you know, if you was an Adidas program, you went to the ABCD camp. If you was Nike, you kind of went to the Nike camp. So, But in tournaments, you you would, you know, if you did your thing, you would, you would have opportunity to play against some of those those guys that went to those camps. Mm. And then Rob Lanier. 
But to answer your question, I didn't really answer about about <laughs> Texas though was no, like I don't, it it doesn't matter. It didn't. That was not the point to me. I that wasn't it. I don't want to be the, the best. When you want to be the best, all that comes with it anyway. So I, you don't have to think about that. That comes that comes with the territory. If you're an elite talent and you perform at a high level, everybody is going to come after you, and you will have the choice to make whatever decisions that you want to make. Now, for me, um, I think Texas recruited me for two years. I think a lot of people recruited me the entire time. You know, when it comes to to Texas, I mean, they did things that probably no other university has ever done. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't think um, in this probably in the state of Texas, nobody has ever been recruited that hard as, as like me. Um, far as I think the rules was totally different. So when I was at an AAU tournament and they was uh, they could be there, they was there. They wasn't just there at my game. They was everywhere I went. <laughs> they um, soon as we got off a plane, you know, I can I, I don't know. Me and Daniel, we went and played in Kenny Smith Pro Am League. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they was there. We had practice. It wasn't just. I mean, so it was a couple schools doing it, but nobody was doing it at the level of Texas. But Texas was not my dream school. I never wanted to go to Texas. Mm. Okay. What was your dream school? I don't have a dream school. Okay. I have dream coaches that I want to play for. Okay, just speak on it. Who who do you want to play for? Bobby Crimmins. Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech. Uh, Georgia Tech. He produced NBA players and all the guys that he had went to the league all the way from Mark Bryan to to uh I mean uh not Mark Bryan but Mark Price Mark to Mark Price. Price. Um Kenny Anderson, Kenny Anderson, Travis, Travis, Travis Best, Bass, Stephon Marbury. Yeah, you got track record. Yeah. Um man. I'm missing uh um 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 Bryce Drew. I think I think uh so you know they, they produce a, a ton of pros but I remember when I was at ABCD camp, I mean he got fired, so mm. after that I mean whatever. <laughs> so you knew so you were different you yeah. was a different kind of high school because most high school students you you seem to be very, 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 very mature. So were you like this when you were like a sixteen year old kid? I'm what you I'm the same person. I yeah, because like, it's like you don't you don't really get excited. You just like yeah, you know, I just want to go to you know Bobby Crammons. Man, get excited. No, I, I, get I, excited. Never, I never really I mean, seen T get hyped before. I mean, <laughs> you got to kind of get a real. Just, I mean, I don't play no, no more. So yeah. <laughs> like, if I played, then you would see this is who I am off the court. Yeah. I'm not the same person when you see me on the court. That's right. a totally different person. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of kids don't portray they're the same off the court as well they don't they don't transform into superman when they're playing if they're most kids if they're kind of quiet and shy some kids are quiet and shy on the court they don't they don't they haven't really learned in my opinion to separate who they are as a person to the player that they are when they're on the court the competition they part. haven't separated their drive and what they really want to be in life i was determined where i wanted to go yeah whether you couldn't distract me, you couldn't distract, nothing couldn't distract me where I was trying to go. Mm -hmm. So, far as me, I think, if, if trying to get kids to understand, like, where do you want to go? What is your dreams? What are you going to do to get to your dream? Mm -hmm. Like, nobody sacrifices more, I don't, I don't, nobody sacrificed more than me to get where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Nobody in the city played hurt more than I did as a, as a basketball player. That's documented. Mm -hmm. That's documented. I, I, I mean, but it's also been documented of me being disciplined by my parents and by my high school coach mm -hmm. for not doing the right things from a character standpoint. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, I still had a parent. I still had coaches that didn't uh, just look at my talent and allow me to, to do whatever you I wanted to do. No doubt. Mm -hmm. So I had discipline at the same time. I missed the high school game because I wasn't respecting my mother in the way of what they felt was our code of ethic in the, within our household mm -hmm. of respect. It's a big point. Hey. So it's 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 bigger than just the basketball aspect of it. It's it's you know, what do you want to be and what do you you know, what do you want to represent? I mean my my, my parents is it's pretty much the, the best example I can have for myself because of the way they did things, the way mm -hmm. they do things and what they stand for. It's just it's no BS with neither one of them. Did you understand that as a kid, like growing up? Because sometimes, you know, you're looking back on it and you have kids yourself. You, you, I'm sure you probably take some of the lessons that you learned and still in your own. But at that time, were you thinking, man, y'all tripping, man? 
I mean, every kid will, but yeah. at the same time, yeah. I mean, if you honest within yourself, you know when you're tripping. I don't need nobody to tell me that I'm tripping. I didn't need a coach to tell me I'm playing bad. I don't need somebody to tell me I'm playing good. I know those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need somebody to put a stamp on what I'm doing. Right. I mean, it's it's up to me to to put that stamp in. And control that. So for me, I, I felt that I can always control my environment. I can, can always control what goes on on the court. And I always can control the outcome. Point guard mentality. I'm just a winner. Yeah. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Now, now, now was, there any, was there any other dream coaches besides Kermit's at that time? No, it didn't really matter about the coach. That's just who I liked it. I was going to get where I wanted to go. On, I felt on my, on my own. Mm -hmm. As far as... Um, so it didn't matter. It doesn't matter where you go to school. That was just what I seen. That was a program that I liked because I looked at point guards. But when it came down to recruiting, I got recruited by everybody. I told a lot of people no. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I told Duke no. Mm -hmm. Why? I just I didn't want to sit behind anybody. But um, also didn't think that didn't know if they were really recruiting in the first place either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but. You just gotta know what you want. I knew what I wanted. You know what I mean? I, I knew what I wanted. I was patient. You know, I think I've been patient my whole basketball career. I mean, it's a lot of things that happened when I was a younger kid. When I was a young kid, I was the best player on the team, but I lost a lot. Hmm. I lost a whole lot. <laughs> I lost early in my I lost a lot. That taught you something. What did that teach you? I mean, it doesn't matter. You gotta you, you gotta perform, you gotta find a way to win and you gotta figure out how to make people better. And I'm used to people stacking teams up against me as a kid, they did it. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I didn't AAU basketball. I mean, that's just, even in leagues that we, that I played in growing up, just to get started. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just love the game of basketball. I love competing, I love having fun, I love the cheers, I love the, the energy, I love the booze, I love everything that came with it. But you got to be able to accept both. Now, did I get frustrated? Was I a hothead early on as, as, as a kid of getting frustrated? Yeah, but that also allowed me to develop um, when, I, when I got to high school. Because I didn't seen it all. I didn't been through it all. You know, I didn't, you know, I'd been on the worst team. I didn't been where refs didn't give me calls. I'd been ejected before as a kid. I didn't went and out of the out of the country well out of the state and go play and we brought some other players in and I uh, didn't play as many minutes so i i experienced all of that stuff mm. that helps make the make you the person that you are today from a mental and from a physical standpoint from a basketball perspective jump back to texas yeah your freshman year how far did y'all go so, uh sweet 16. Sweet 16. Could have made it to the league On that team, who was that? Give me those names. You remember those names? Was, was, on my team? Was Royal on uh, that team? Royal Ivy. James? James Thomas, Brian Bodica, Jason Clark, out of Klein Forest, Dejanel Erskine, Brandon Mouton, Terrell Ross, out of uh, the East Coast. He's smiling, guys. I, uh, see, the, I see the memories coming back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. Sigmund Harris, yeah, I remember my squad for sure. Chris Owens was there as a freshman, but he got hurt. And this was and this was TJ Four with the braid. So these guys that think that they <laughs> yeah that they, that they bought that that they that they fresh and new with these braids in their head and have no idea that TJ Four had these braids that came yeah his came down to his shoulders too. <laughs> so and then when y'all when you how was that collective unit TJ? Tell me about just. Yeah, when you first stepped on campus and y'all started playing, and did, you didn't know those guys, most of those guys, you was like, yo, this is... I mean, a lot of it is this. Go back to my recruiting. It's just like, I, I didn't sign early. I told everybody I was signing late. Um, and, and for me, it was more my, that was more my dad call. So a lot of schools really just stopped recruiting me because people didn't want to wait that long. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so it, it came down to Texas, Cincinnati, U of H, Texas, and Louisville. That was the only four schools that I really had when it came down to the end. I, I think um, for me, I think every kid should should have U of H somewhere in their top five to go visit that school. That's just, that just only makes sense mm -hmm. to me. Uh, being here, um, during that time, we, we, we used to practice up there, but 
Um, I, I just wanted to honor that because I'm a Houston, I'm a Houston kid. I'm, 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 I'm here, so I, I always wanted to show that honor to give them the, the, uh, the option or the possibility to sit here and put their, they, they best foot forward to see if they can land me to stay home. No doubt. Um, but I don't think people understand also the, 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 the pressure. I mean, I went to University of Texas. I mean, obviously, I made it work, but nobody in the city agreed with that besides me and my parent, my family. Nobody, everybody else said I was crazy for doing it. Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody cheered that decision on um, at all. But um, what, what come down to it is, yeah, when it comes down to recruitment and when it comes down to what I wanted and what the school wanted, uh, it, it became a perfect fit because the more you allow a coach to, to, to recruit you and, and be on the phone and, and talk to you, um, it allows you to get an understanding of what, what his character is. Mm -hmm what those coaches like and what they don't like. You know, ask them tough questions, ask them situations to put them in and see what their response is gonna be. So for me, it was building a relationship before I was gonna to commit to anybody. Mm -hmm. That was my process of making sure, like, who am I gonna have a relationship with? Is that why your dad made you guys wait to the end? Like you said, your dad wanted to, to sign late. Is that part of his, part of his, his rationale as well? It was. It's the same stuff that go on there. It was just too. It's just too much crazy other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So just to block all the distractions of all the craziness, I just think it. Was, it just made sense to. Yep. To make sure that you're making the right decision and you're not getting caught up. You know, caught up or overwhelmed with something that that sound good or look good at the moment. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's. You don't really know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You don't. You don't know if you're gonna make it. You really don't. You just hope every decision that you make, decisions you make help you make. Mm -hmm. A lot of people make bad decisions that has the upper hand to make it, but they make a bad decision. And a lot of that is what we, you know, why I'm kind of involved kind of with, with, with the AU aspect. You know, I got a son. I got a program I've been having since my dad, since I've been in the NBA. Mm -hmm. um, our biggest thing is it, it doesn't care. It, it doesn't matter about the talent. It's just a matter of kids and people who need an opportunity and who believes in what what we're trying to instill in, the, in those kids. Um, so, you know, you're just trying to give people a different path of a way that it was done and it was done the right way. Mm -hmm. um, many people, I mean, most kids don't know this. They won't know this at all. But when you were at Texas, mm -hmm. there was something that happened one time that was on every news channel across the country and you're not thinking about it right now because there's so many things that you went through you as gotta be talking about the fight i'm gonna talk about Stillwater, oklahoma the fight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fight, yeah no i mean it's an unfortunate situation i mean you know you're competing you got the, the camera people right underneath the you know photographers uh underneath the basket there's a loose ball and you know i, I tried not you know i had to jump over them and kind of end up with a tunnel and they had a crowd of people right there and I kind of end up, you know, as soon as I landed, bump into a, a lady and she falls down and, and um, I just feel somebody grab my neck, man, and uh, your natural instinct is to protect yourself and that's what we did and then my teammates came and got involved and it was an unfortunate situation. I mean, it's on YouTube, some punches and stuff was thrown. I mean, we, I was, we was on the USA Today. <laughs> um, you know, but I, I, I mean, without knowing the facts, you, you know, you, you would think, you know, the fan was crazy. But I, I mean, you know, we end up talking the next, you know, a couple mm -hmm. of days later after that incident happened. But, you know, her wife was pregnant at the time. So I can only imagine if, if that's your if that's your wife and she's pregnant with your child, your first child, and she falls and, you know, the danger, of, you know, of what that could be. So, um, I mean, unfortunately, nobody was, was hurt. What's that? Uh, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma yeah. State. Yeah. Isn't that was that wasn't that where Marcus Smart was when he got into it a couple of years back? Was that Oklahoma State? Like, was, was that it? Texas? Was that Texas Tech? I think. He was at Texas Tech. He was at Tech. No. Okay, I'm about to say. So that, that, that was that was <laughs> that was that was crazy. That that was a crazy moment. But I mean, at the end of the day, it, it just kind of shows like you know the, the the chemistry that we had as a as a team. Like we we support each other. People don't realize how how hard we went in practice. Like. Mm -hmm. You know that it was it was a lot of fights in practice. It was a lot of competitiveness. A lot of guys going to each other every single day. So it was it was a fun time. And Texas days was 
It was mad, mad fun. <laughs> I guess I guess whoever got that YouTube, they're going to start getting a lot of hits because people going to be like, yo, what is TJ talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mo most, he never, he never, never heard, heard about that. It was all on USA Today. I mean, we it was, was worried. Yeah. I mean, we didn't, you didn't know if there was, you know, if it was going to be some suspensions handed down. Unfortunately, it, it wasn't, but. Y'all win the game? Uh, the game was pretty much over. Yeah, we won the game. I mean, it was like. I was under a minute when this incident okay, kind of okay. happened. So I mean, the game was kind of kind of over already. at that, at that yeah. time. Yeah. Do you remember who was on that team for Oklahoma State? For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, Melvin Sanders. That was pretty good. I mean, defensive guy. Ivan McFarlane was was there at that time. You had um, uh, Baker, um, the guard. I can't remember his name. Renee was pretty fast. Um, he was pretty good. He wasn't bad. But yeah, I remember a couple of those guys for sure. That was a. Oklahoma State was a tough team. That was, that was really good. So you had to and you had to be on your A game. And the thing about it, like you said, Ivan McFarland was on that team, and that was your high school teammate who you won state with. Yeah, man, we had a chance. <laughs> we could have been three feet. I mean, obviously we got suspended. You know, I had to forfeit all those games going into our sophomore. I mean, our sophomore year that prevented us from making the playoffs to compete for the title. But you know, our soft, uh, our junior and senior year, being able to win back to back. Uh, championships and just understanding that I mean we had a lot of co we had every coach you can think of coming to our, our practices and, and at our games but that ain't never distract us we never cared about the the college coaches in that aspect uh, we knew that they was coming in there because we put ourselves in that situation to make them come in the gym so it wasn't it wasn't the mentality of we needed them to come in there mm -hmm. I mean I think the thing for us was just Play, have fun, compete, and never let somebody get the best of you when you're playing, and the rest will take care of itself. That was our mentality. Mm. And that's the kind of mentality, because Coach Courtney was your coach, right? Coach Courtney was our coach. For sure. That's the mentality that he definitely has, so obviously it, it permeated and went through, obviously, the program, because he's a hard-nosed dude. Mm -hmm. and I can't even imagine a young Coach Courtney. <laughs> I mean, we went through it all. I mean, so for me getting to college and having, you know, a, a Rick Barnes out, you know, was, was tough as far as, you know, his expectations, right? And and his intensity. And I think, you know, you can take it, you know, you can take his, in, for me, you can take his intensity good or bad. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what you can handle and what you can't handle. But mm -hmm. for me, um, I mean, my daddy was harder than all of them from the standpoint of what his expectations and, and how he criticized mm. me as a basketball player. So none of that stuff was what phased me. It actually helped me become better because the only time my coaches really challenged and, and yelled at me, especially my dad. I mean, you know, when people don't understand, even my high school through my college career, you know, my mom and dad, they was pretty much at almost every game. So I have my own side language with, with, with my parents. <laughs> um, of, of, Certain things I need to do, or if, if if I'm doing too much, I mean we have mm -hmm. our own kind of kind of code of, of speaking to each other, and um, really wasn't a big deal, man. Yeah. Like all of that was was it, it was in me to be to be good and just understanding that I you know I had to always pre prove people wrong, but at the end of the day, like I just wanted people to come watch me play again. And you know, my, that's what my parents taught me. You know, make you know, make them come back. It may be your first time coming to see me play. I just want you to come back and see me again. Mm -hmm. And we was able to accomplish that by having sold out crowds every every time we played for. You know, three years I I played varsity in high school. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, going back again, fast forward after your sophomore year at Texas, two thousand thirteen. 2003, excuse you me, know, 03. You decided to leave. You to, uh, I thought about leaving as a freshman, too. Really? That's what I'm saying. What people don't know is I led the country. I still have a record. I led the country. This is still, still hold that record is still standing to the day. Unless uh, the, the kid ball at UCLA ended up um, it, uh, breaking. Eight, he had eight, an opportunity. 8.7, 8.5. 8.27, 8. 8. yeah. Uh. So that, that record still stands. So, I mean, I could have got drafted. You know, I could have been with a late first round pick, maybe. I would assume I'd have been a late first round pick, but that wasn't that wasn't good enough for me. I mean, I knew I I wasn't ready to go into the NBA. Mm -hmm. I knew I wasn't strong. I knew I wasn't. I needed to improve on my shooting. I knew that I won Freshman Player of the Year, and I didn't really work hard. 
you know, because I came into college with my neck condition. So I didn't get to work out in the summer. I, I played my freshman year just off of pure talent. Hmm. I didn't really spend much time in the weight room. I mean, I practiced hard, but I really didn't. So for me, I just did it off of pure talent. And I just realized, like, this is this is what it is. Like, I can. I can really turn it. I can, I can really match it. It's a whole other level that yeah. I know I can. I yeah. can get to. Yeah, yeah. So then, your sophomore year, was it hard to leave because you got drafted number eight by the number Milwaukee eight. Bucks? No, nah, it wasn't hard to leave because I did everything to leave. I, I, I said at the end of the day, me going to the NBA, it's I want to have the option to go to the NBA. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to put myself in a position whether I want to do it if I if I don't. So for me, it's. It's the preparation way before you get to the season. Is what we're talking about here, especially with, with even all these kids. It has nothing to do with the season. The season's the easy part. It's what you do behind closed doors when nobody's watching. Mm -hmm. So it, it was the mentality of me taking everything totally serious. And the day that we lost um, the Oregon in the Sweet 16 by, I think about it, hit the shot. With, I think we would have won the overtime. Um, other than that, I was in the gym the next day, and I told Coach, let's get after now. Let's, let's go to work. It's time hmm. to... And people don't understand how many hours I put into it. You know, I changed my entire shot. But that, that was hours. That wasn't something that just happened. I mean, yeah. that was probably putting 40 hours a week just late at night. Sometimes 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. Yeah. You know, sometimes I always work out after practice. It's never a day after practice I don't do nothing. Even in high school? Period. Practice over. See, it's and, my time. And that's my the, time and that's the <laughs> reason. That's the reason why David Stern didn't call my name. Cause I always thought that <laughs> I did enough at practice. I never did anything outside of practice in high school. I just practiced, and that was it. And so I understand the mentality and what I don't. Not to, not saying I know what it, it what it takes, but I understand better now that that ain't enough, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I mean. Now today ain't enough. You got to do more than just practice. It's a lot of kids doing more, but it's not efficient and effective. So okay. that doesn't necessarily mean anything. If I mean, it's a lot of kids doing a lot of stuff that's not getting anything out of it. They're just in the gym. That's that's. I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah. I think um, when you, can, however you want to put it, I think mm -hmm. it's, it, that's happened a lot in high school basketball, AAU basketball, and kids that's not playing AAU basketball. It's a lot of kids doing things that. Um, it's good, but it, it doesn't translate into it's kind of counter, making it's kind of counterproductive. Better, yeah. Mm. Um, I listened to one of the topics, y'all. I, I don't know if it was this show or the, or the chop shop. Um, I think y'all. Somebody was talking about by training, you know, and and how that's, you know, everybody's opinion on that. But you go wherever you feel you're gonna get. You can get better. Um, I think right now, um, I use training because I love being in the gym. Mm -hmm. I want to help. I just want to help people get better. No matter if that's your program, any, anybody's program, you you're more than welcome to come in. I think it's a it's a thing when it comes down to the, the territorial aspect of of the kids. And yeah, you know, I sit on this show and I like I don't, I don't recruit any. Any, I don't recruit kids. I mean, if it's some kids that you may see me working with, that may be on a whole nother level of what that kid may need or that kid may have communicated with us of, of something that maybe he hasn't communicated with the people he's around, whether it's his family, whether it's his mentor, whether it's AAU coach. So if you see somebody around us, it's, it's, it's some of the need. So we're kind of like the desperate person that when something's going right, you know, how can we, how can, you know, if you need some instruction, how can we help you do something different? Mm -hmm. Necessarily like, you know, yes, do I have an AAU program? Yeah, I do. I always had an AAU program. But it's about us mentoring mentoring the kids in so many different areas that I feel a lot of kids are, are, are lacking just from outside of basketball. So since we jump into, we, we, we're on you having an AAU program, I yeah. have a question. Yeah. How do you feel when you got some of your colleagues who played in the league with you mm -hmm. and they just bashed. AAU was bad. AAU was terrible. You got a lot of these guys, um, you know, that that say those things and that, and you are a person that played in the league with them, whether with them or not, and you come back and you're helping and giving and doing something for youth in mm -hmm. general. 
but you have people that have not ever came down and coached an AAU game, haven't been around these kids like you have, mm -hmm. but they sit up there, they tearing it down like we, it's a bad culture. Is it? Do you feel like this is a bad culture, or what is it that you that do those? Do you, when you hear those things, is it anything that makes you feel a certain way about it, or are you just like okay with them saying that? Good question. Um, I think if you experience the things that an NBA player has experienced mm -hmm. on the court, after and off the court, it it trumps a lot of stuff because it's a lot of things in AAU basketball, high school basketball that I think coming from our perspective, y'all may not be able. I ain't gonna say y'all. I'm just gonna say that some of basketball. You can't express certain things to these kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think a lot of stuff what we're talking about is, I don't think it's necessarily mean the basketball aspect of it. It's the craziness. I don't think that's what guys are talking about. I don't think guys are saying, Marlon Lowe, you can't coach, you can't do that. I, I, don't, I, don't, I think the context and the content is not the basketball aspect of it. It's the, all the other stuff that determines the outcome of these kids' lives. For as, you know, Everybody talk about a kid jumping from here to over there to over there. Does it really matter? Really, I mean, it shouldn't unless it's your kid. Right, yeah. If unless it's your seed, if a kid want to go, oh, well, so what? So be it. But I think what we're talking about is... We're allowing kids to jump, 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 jump. And this situation is really not better than that situation. Right. So I think as a whole, if it's your program, if it's the, I don't want the names, but if it's just program B and program C, uh, if this person can offer a little bit more than that kid, and that situation may be better, I think what we're trying to say is how can we create a better situation to give every kid the best possible need for them to be kind of su successful whether you're traveling whether you're not traveling these kids need more than basketball because we're talking about 99.9 .9 of kids ain't going to the nba right so how many of these kids are coming from programs that are actually graduating so i think from an nba perspective we're just telling people to we, we just want everybody to understand the real we're selling false hopes so you you talk to me about my aspiration like yeah i want to be an nba player no doubt about it but I wasn't looking for you for guidance. I wasn't looking for you for guidance. I wasn't looking for my AAU coach for guidance. Like that that was in my inner self. Mm -hmm. That that was that was my work as an athlete. Did somebody take me to the gym? Yeah. But I guarantee you I spent more time training myself in my driveway, mm -hmm. drilling down my street, putting a hanger on my door inside my house and balling up a sock. No doubt. Is where I feel I got better mentally. So I just think when it comes down to guys bashing it, I just think that they're saying is we want another vehicle in another way that's better now. Because this system has been the same for 30 years, but it hasn't changed at all, right? Everybody is going to keep fighting for a shoe deal when, okay, well, how do we get a shoe deal, but it takes care of everybody? I see people with shoe deals, but they're only taking care of two teams, but they got a whole program. That's right. not, that's, so I just think it could, it could, it could uh, uh, more could be done I to help that. more kids. That's all. I get that. And I'm not going, we can, we can turn the corner on it, but I'm not, I get that. But there, when, when those conversations, whether it's Charles Barkley, you don't have to call out names, I call them out, <laughs> or any of these other guys that want to throw AAU under the bus, all these AAU coaches and this and that, they, 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 when they, people mention AAU, and obviously AAU is just the name that they throw out, it's summer basketball, travel basketball, but they refer everything back to us. If it, if it's, if it should be, well, those shoes should, they don't say anything about the shoe companies, not that I'm trying to deflect anything, but when they say a, a certain thing, they point down to people like yourself. If you didn't play in the NBA, they might they might think differently because TJ Ford plays it played in the NBA, but they might you have a program now. Mm -hmm. You put a lot of time in for kid for your children and for kids that don't even play for you. Correct. And do you feel like what you've been doing is a positive thing? Yes. Okay. Do you have you seen other people outside of what you do that didn't play the league? Are they doing a positive thing? The guys that I know that have programs, yes. Right. So, so, so my deal is, and, and and we can we can move on, but my deal is, it they kind of 
put you in the same box as some, some, per se. And it shouldn't. And I would say this: it shouldn't be. Whereas they all they all are terrible, but oh, TJ's okay. Oh, Kenny Smith's okay. Oh, Jerry Stackhouse is okay. Because y'all played in their, your in their I, fraternity. I think they can actually see what we're doing more than just basketball that allows them to kind of say that, right? Because our, our platform. So I mean, you got we got you got a fan base. So if I'm doing some charity stuff, obviously that 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 gets out there maybe quicker than what what you doing. You could be doing the same thing, but mm -hmm. just the platform that we have of, of being an NBA player, we already have a fan base, so we have people follow what we're doing. So Regardless. it's probably going to get looked at totally different coming from our view because of the the platform that we on. Mm -hmm. Not to say that the, nobody else is not doing it, right? But I think the thing is, it's just a lot of people that's not doing it that way. Right, so I think if NBA guys, I don't think many NBA guys are trying to run it, uh, uh, really care to run an AAU program. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to say care, but I mean, I, I think they would love to put that in somebody else's power and hands to do all the things that's necessary that they feel is helping a kid outside of basketball. I mean, I'm going to keep getting back to that. I mm -hmm. mean, because the whole thing is you're mentoring, you're teaching kids leadership, so... The basketball is just the smallest part. I think that conversation basketball should be the same for all of us. Help kids get a free education by getting a getting a scholarship, right? But what about the kids on all of our teams that cannot get a scholarship? How many programs, if, if we're talking about the difference between the NBA scenario and why people saying it's bad for AU guys, is how many people actually telling us how many kids are getting academic scholarships or getting in school from their program that doesn't get an athletic scholarship. Right. So, not everybody is trying to help every kid within their program. Everybody's trying to help a select few. And that's no what we're, that's probably the, the, the issue right there that's being not kind of, that talked about in a way that, you have know, a program is, should be equal for everybody. Whether you got great talent or not, this, this, this kid, you're supposed to help in some type of form or some type of fashion. And we all know that that's not the case in the majority right. of AAU basketball. And the, and the crazy part about it, like you said, it's a, it's a select few of guys that are kind of being honed in mm -hmm. and focused on because they may have a chance of making it mm -hmm. to the league. But then you have a lot of guys that make it to the league that nobody thought would make it to the league. Tim Frazier is one. Can't nobody in the city of Houston tell me when he was that straight Jesuit that he was a pro. I mean, you know, half, half the saying? NBA is going to be people that wasn't supposed to make it. Exactly. So, 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 no, so it fosters your point of if you focused your effort into your entire group and foster the relationships between your entire group and not a select two or three, because those two or three, they may not make it. And it may be that fourth or fifth kid that you didn't show any attention to. Jimmy Butler. That got that. Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler has that same type of drive to make it that now people want to hang their coattail on and say, yeah, he played with me. Well, you ain't get yeah, I mean, you no love when he's playing with you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, it, it's going to be more of those type of kids that make it to the NBA, and it's going to be even, even more. Because of the desire, because of the mentality that a lot of kids, even in this city, are really, really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. They might not be on your team. They may not be on my team. They may be on Top Guns. They may be on 8 League Clothes. They may be on Team Stacks. They may be on all these other programs that don't get good recognition. But kids just need time. A lot of these kids need time. It doesn't happen overnight. A lot of kids need time to develop. So mm. I don't really just get caught up over... A lot, of the, a lot of the kids, especially here, I mean, you can look at a De'Aaron Fox, but what other guy that's, like, he's in, in the league by, he was in the league by himself. Right, coming out of high school. Wasn't even close. Now, was it talent that was just as good as him? Yeah, but he still was in the league by himself when he, it almost, I mean, he went through a drive where he wasn't that player. Mm-hmm. You know, I followed this kid, and this kid's a, a really, really great talent. He's going to be special, and he's going to be the next guy that kind of can push the wave um, as a as a hometown kid, uh, no different than someone like myself. I mean, he put the seat on his back. I mean, he brought national attention here. I mean, 
he had a lot of people watching him come and play. Uh, mm -hmm. He's doing it on a high level at, at Kentucky. No doubt. Um, where, you know, as long as he stay healthy, I mean, this kid is going to be a, a top five, top ten pick easy. Um, but he went through a stretch where he did not, he wasn't playing with him. I think he really took off kind of towards the end of the summer to get back to the level where he should have been the whole year. And I think everybody don't understand that as a basketball player, you're going to go through ups and downs. We don't allow our superstar kids or kids that we feel are really, really good, we don't allow them to go through a drop. We don't allow them not to play bad. Mm -hmm. So the expectations that we actually put on the kids when they're struggling mm. gets put on a bigger scale when, when every athlete struggles. I don't care who you are. You're going to go through a minute. Now, you can disguise it. My mm -hmm. struggle may not be as bad as you you think it's plenty of games that I struggle, but you had no idea. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So I think we got to allow these kids games to grow. But I think in order to allow it to grow, if we want to have a different perspective from the guys who have the platform to talk about AAU basketball, because it's nothing you can do to trump that. You can't trump Charles Barkley that has a national audience <laughs> compared right. to anybody in AAU or Kobe Bryant when he speaks out. Right. So... I think you need these guys. I think you need more guys like myself involved. And I think we need a lot of guys like yourselves. Now, the question is, you know, how do you really get it all together? We say, like, what does everybody really want? Mm -hmm. Because everybody wants something different. So what does everybody want? You may want something different. That's not a problem. But how do we actually say, all right, who, who can lead the way to, to make a change? And change doesn't mean it's going to dictate anybody's program. Change means it's just going to be better for everybody. And I think that's what... The, that's 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 one of the issues that I have is that how do you make it better? If it's better, everybody wins. Mm -hmm. And at some point, it, it needs to get better. It needs to get better soon. You have a plan on what, how you think it should go? How how could it get better? You got or, or something that you would like to see? Everybody just got to be honest. That's that's one thing we talking about in AAU basketball that all NBA players, most NBA players went through, good or bad. And a lot of kids, it's just people being honest. So the same thing we talking about honest in AAU basketball. If you're honest in AAU basketball, how can a coach lie to you about the college? See, people don't realize they go hand in hand, right? It's not a big difference. So why kids make bad decisions, why kids go to certain schools that they shouldn't go to is because they accept somebody not to tell them the full truth. Now, if you didn't accept the full truth, you didn't accept the full truth when it came down to AU basketball. If somebody's recruiting or somebody said that they can have, you can play better, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. uh, it may not even be basketball. This guy may say, I, make sure you take SCT everywhere. I, I don't know. You can make whatever it may be, but mm -hmm. a, a lot of people don't. We, we, we got to teach them the, the fact of how do you, how, who's teaching kids to really know how do you make a college decision? No doubt. That's not, that's not, that's not a That's class. the hardest thing out of all of the AAU stuff is easy. That's not hard. The hard problem is how do you instruct a family and help a family understand for the next four years how is he going to pick the best situation for him to go to school uh -huh. for the future. That's what I'm on. I'm not on the, I mean, who, the talent is talent, kids going to play, but I think as a whole, if, if, if it's programs that cannot do certain things that somebody can implement, mm -hmm. I think we could put all this stuff under one roof where everybody still gets it. Mm -hmm. Everybody can still make sure they get the SAT information or the new changes. Like if somebody's programs can't get that, then every it's like the source one source could be for everybody. Mm. And I think if we can create that here in this city, I think this city would be better off. I think everybody programs would be better. I think. Um, you know, you'll have a top division. You have all these different divisions where it makes sense for everybody and everybody's kind of really getting along and, and really doing what's right for the future of the kids. And, and what that means is, is that everybody wants their programs to continue to grow mm -hmm. think, or, or, or to last. You know, I don't think people want their programs to be here today and gone tomorrow. Um, but if we don't do things better, then that's going to happen to a lot of people just just because of time and I think um, you know other than that speaking on Houston I just think we could do a, a better job coming together and giving the kids a lot of stuff that uh, that they really want mm -hmm. you know uh, um, 
I'm gonna keep doing my part. You know, I got stuff that I'm doing um, with my program and outside of my program. As far as um, doing got, some stuff in Austin, coming up? So I got my tournament that I do in Austin, March 24, 26. And that's just um, something that I just wanted to bring light. You know, great facility, but just just create something different and give people that environment what it what it's what it's like to play in a in a, in a, in a great facility and and what it is to compete and just create a different atmosphere where I'm trying to do all these things that I'm, I'm talking about um, that I, I feel like I'm capable of doing, but I, I'm putting it all in play. And I, I think it will be the, the next thing here for the, for the future. Um, the other thing I'm about to do is some stuff, to, um, once I finish putting together, you know, maybe the next couple of weeks I'll come back and, and, and get back on the show and, and talk once I hash this stuff out. But, you know, a lot of it is just, you know, and guys play. I mean, we can play, compete, but I don't think it changed somebody's program whether you lose to somebody or you win. And I think that's just the mentality of everybody not wanting to play against each other for the better sake of their program and not just well, who cares who wins. Put a good yeah. game together and, and play. It doesn't stop your program because if you're doing what you, you know, and the parents like what you're doing, they're, gonna, they're not going to move. Right. You know, if they do, then... Good luck, but majority of these kids, they do a lot of moving around in high school. They do a lot of moving around in life, and that's no, what we're trying to, I think we can prevent that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel better. Did I say that? I said when a kid plays on four, five, six, and all these teams, they gonna tra most of them, they transfer in college too. Because mm -hmm. they're not used to stability. They're used to everybody. Up, this thing's always going their way pretty much. And it's not the fact that, uh, not saying that, a, you know, many times it's about oh, the kids, but somebody else want want something easy for the child to have them, have them to learn and struggle. So sometimes they just kept moving them, move them here. But it's a lot of different reasons why people leave too. So it's not just that everybody's leaving, but. Uh, you can treat it like it's college, right? If it's, if it's like college, every coach is going to tell you pretty much identically the same thing. So if that's the case, I mean, we all can sit in a room and have a table and have a parent come down here and everybody give a spiel and you can go from there and just say, all right, well, is this, does this fit your needs? If it doesn't, fine. I mean, what's what's wrong about that? Right. I think, exactly. I think your program will provide something that my program program not provide. I don't know what what that what that is, but we, it's all something. We all got something. So Absolutely. Really, there ain't no secrets. But everybody want to act like it's secrets. And I just think, look, I'm about the kids. Anybody that's trying to help kids and better kids, I'm all for it. Yeah. That's it. And which people can line that up and put something together that. The city can be proud of, and at the same time, these kids can have something that when they look back 10 years from now, they'll be able to be on one of these shows and have their own show and talk about the good times and the good things and the memories that they had. No doubt. And I think that's what we're going back to. That's 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 not now, right? Right. Like, i never I seen J.J. Caldwell and De'Aaron Fox and, and a lot of these kids really just play against each other. You know, just on some fun stuff. A lot of these kids are homeboys. Like, mm -hmm. well, they all just, play together. Just fun. Yeah. Whether they're on the same team or not, yeah. Yeah, it's always stuff you could create that uh, they don't have pickup runs no more. But hopefully, we we gonna change some of those. You bought stuff. some of that back. We gonna bring it back. back. We gonna bring it back. You know, I got the city league that, that we did right before we did in September, where you allow kids to come in. I think it was like twenty five dollars uh, to come in and just just play and compete. You know, and Man. it's just about. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, you guys are setting a meeting up with everybody. Um, mm -hmm. As long as I'm in town, I, I, I'll be there and want to hear everybody's thoughts. But at the same time, like, I just want everybody to know, like, look, I'm here for the betterment of, of the city and the kids. And there's some stuff that is dear to my heart. And that's coming from the whole stuff that's outside of basketball. And that is um, making sure kids understand the importance of building relationships, having good character, and teaching kids of doing things the right way and, and even if you fall um, having a support system when you when you do fall and, and being honest to the kids and to the parents of understanding that you know everybody's not going to division one it's okay to go to division two some <laughs> yeah. kids shouldn't be waiting some kids should right mm -hmm. uh, and I think as a whole we can all sit in this room together and explain this to all the parents this should be one big old Houston city meeting where everybody's <laughs> explaining all these things in front of all the parents at, at one time. Right. But thank y'all for having me. I wanted to break the new in with you guys. I know I've been busy and uh anytime y'all
Y'all need me. It's a lot of other stuff that we ain't get to touch on. Oh, hold on. I'll be able to spend more time with you guys. I want to uh, give me one more minute. I got a couple quick hitters for you. Because like you said, right. we didn't talk about any of your NBA career hardly. And that was a hell of a... You, you, it was well, let's do part two. Cause I got, I got, I got. Go. Whether y'all want to do it tomorrow, y'all want to do it tonight. I, I can't, I can't be late. I can't trimming. be late to this one. We ain't trimming. We can talk about all that uh, <laughs> for sure. But whatever, I'm, I'm an open book. I, I'm just like I said. I'm just this kid. I'm homegrown. Everybody seeing seeing me grow. Everybody um, seeing me as a kid. Obviously, I, 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 I did some things that you know I didn't imagine that I would be able to do, but. Uh, to be able to go to a university and make it cool for every kid to stay in the state of Texas to do everything, you know, opposite of what the trend and create my own trend, um, it, it, it's something that I think has some value and it's just a matter of, of, of you know, just getting information out. I can't use it anymore. All right. Right. I, I can't use none of it. I just want to pass it on of, of, you know, my thoughts, you know, my expressions of what I feel, and that has nothing to say that. You know your thoughts are your thoughts are not right. It's just look. I'm, I want to tell you from my perspective of the good and the bad. Yeah, I can tell you all the good stuff that happened to me about basketball. But what about all the the, the dark days that right. that makes you think twice about it? Mm -hmm. And that's stuff that I kind of want to talk about because that's the aspect that helps kids mentally become better. Well, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get you back on because they need to get hear back. That. Just let me know when. <laughs> like, hey, I don't want to be late to three thirty. Like, <laughs> hopefully, I ain't. But anytime, like I said, I'm, just call me, man. I'm, I'm, I don't stay far, and hopefully, man, I get you to start, you know, been around and support some of the stuff I'm doing. And like I said, it, it's vice versa, man. It's 